Good morning and welcome to my laboratory. What you're looking at there is a bright white LED and 38 green LEDs. Um, the 38 green LEDs are in, uh, let's see, 19 in parallel in each row and then the two rows are in series and then all of that is also in series with the white LED. So I've got the and, and all of that right now is running on a decreasing capacitor voltage of that from a three farad capacitor. Okay. Now as you can see the, L, the green LEDs fade faster because they're just not as efficient but the, I don't think anybody would say that that white LED is uh, anything but uh, acceptably bright. right? And uh, we're still decreasing on my three farad capacity stack there at a rate of about a millivolt per second or something slightly over that. Okay, I think that one can actually do some math based on that decrease in voltage. Alright, now if all of my LEDs were white, they'd all be glowing this brightly, okay, at that same current drain because the white LEDs are a lot more efficient than the green ones are. Alright, so here's, here's the setup. What I'm doing right now is just bleeding off some charge on the capacitor because in a moment what I'm going to do is uh, remove the battery and take a jumper and short out the capacitor completely like this. And you can see even with a direct short it takes a little while for that 3 farad capacitor to come down in voltage. And if I only leave it shorted for a few seconds like that and then take the clip back off you can see that the cap rebounds a little bit in voltage. And it depends on how much it was charged to in the beginning. Since I started this discharge at 0.5 volts, we're not seeing a lot of rebound. But if I had had the, char the capacitor charged up to its full 5 volt capacity and then did that brief shorting, you might see a volt or two of rebound on there. Alright, so at any rate, I'm going to reshort that cap again and make sure that the charge is down to an acceptable level, something in the millivolt range. Alright, now I'm going to take the jumper off and you can see that we have a little bit of rebound. Okay. Now I'm going to take one of these NIMH batteries here and, uh, gee, do I have enough hands to do this, to measure the voltage on that battery? I guess I probably don't. At any rate, what I'm going to do now is put the battery in. This this switch is uh, switches the battery in or out uh, of charging the three farad capacitor stack. I've unsoldered it from my Ghost Light Gadget Mall Laser Saber system over here. Everything to the right of here is disconnected. Okay. There is a 1 ohm current viewing and charging resistor in series with my battery that will be providing the charging current for the 3 farad capacitor stack. Then I have the 3 farad capacitor stack directly patched in to the power source of my 2N2222 Jewel Thief, which is a near replication of what Lawrence Tsiung is, uh, is advertising. 2N2222. I've disconnected the normal blue LED in there and this is a switch that allows me to either switch completely off to the input power coming in this way to the Jewel Thief or directly input power to the LED system uh, and that's to prove that whatever the input power is cannot light the LEDs directly. Okay so right now we'll just leave it in the center off position. All right. Now here's the clip lead that goes over to my bank of LEDs. All right. So like it, like I said again, I have one white LED in series with a 19 LED parallel stack 
and then that is in series with another 19 LED parallel stack. So I have 39 total LEDs in a series parallel arrangement. I don't have but one of these white LEDs left, uh, but I have a whole lot of green ones. All right. So now let's see what happens when now this, is, this switch is off. So I'm going to go ahead and mount the battery in the battery holder. So I can even do that with one hand. I went away from the springs because they weren't secure enough and so I made this little compression vise arrangement for all of my battery holders now and that locks them in really well. Okay, So that, that battery is securely in there. It's not going to come out and it's making good electrical connection. All right. Now I'm going to go back to the view up here. That's the residual charge on the capacitor. I'm turning the switch on to charge the capacitor and the jewel thief is still off. I'm turning the switch on to charge the capacitor now. You can see as the capacitor voltage comes up to near the battery voltage, the charge rate drops off and slows down because the capacitor will asymptotically approach the value of the charging voltage. And that's what it's doing. The battery is about 1.3 volts or so. All right, and it looks to me like that's taken about 45 or 50 seconds to get up to that stable voltage. Now I'm going to turn the battery switch off and you'll see a little bit of sag in voltage. And now I'm going to physically actually remove the battery completely. Okay, and let's just check to make sure that our caps are holding the voltage. All right. So that's just leakage. The caps aren't perfect, they leak a little bit of voltage. These are old technology caps. I wouldn't even call them super caps. They're one farad 5.5 volt uh, caps. They cost about five dollars each in comparison to the five dollars each that a 10 farad 2.5 volt modern supercapacitor costs. Which my supplier doesn't stock by the way. I just called them to ask. Alright, so the capacitor is holding voltage fairly well. All right. Now I'm going to turn the jewel thief on to the direct supply to the LEDs. All right. That's that. And that causes a little bit of voltage drop in the capacitor, but it sure doesn't light any LEDs. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the jewel thief mode on this switch here and watch what the capacitor does. First we'll of course confirm that we have all in lights lighting sufficiently adequately brightly enough and now let's watch what the voltage on the capacitor does. As you can see it certainly does not drop down to 0.37 volts right away. It takes a good amount of time for it to drop and all of the time that it is dropping you're just lighting up those lights, and if it was a white, if they were white LEDs, they would be just as bright as this one is. As the voltage drops, the voltage drop rate slows down. white light is still plenty bright. The green lights of course are dimming. So I'm still running 39 LEDs here. 
They might not be as bright as they would be if they were all white, but they're using the same amount of power. Now the green lights have largely gone out. They're still glowing a little bit, but you can see that the white light, which is carrying the same current, as the banks of the green lights, is still shining nice and brightly. And you can see that the rate of voltage decrease has gone down. Now right around in here is where I consider the 2N2222 jewel thieves to stop working. Um, anywhere around 4.7 to 4, or rather 0 0.47, 0 0.45 volts is where the, the oscillations are no longer really strong enough to sustain much voltage amplification. Nevertheless, I still got a white LED that's in series with the rest of those LEDs and it's glowing just fine. Now this is on a 3 farad cap, remember. Not a 10 farad cap. And it's only charged to less than 1.3 volts, not 1.5 volts. Okay, now we're getting down to where the white LEDs dimming to the point where you can actually see the little wires in there. Alright, so I don't know what that was, three minutes, four minutes, something like that. Uh, I'm showing, yeah, it was around four minutes. Now when you consider that there are more than nine times the energy in uh, Lawrence's capacitors as there are in mine, well, I guess you can do the math. Thank you for watching.